The most common knots are used to tie off, tie together, and tie down. But a great knot is useless if you can't remember it. So let's start with what you already know. The knot you use to correctly tie your shoes is called a slip square knot. Slipped meaning you can pull one of these ends to pull the knot free. To tie a basic square knot, you go left over right, right over left. But what if instead of our blue rope, we had a solid bar? Let's try tying that square knot one more time. Left over right and wrap it around. Right over left and wrap it around. Look what we get when I pull it tight. This is a cow hitch, also known as a lark's head or a girth hitch. And check this out. I have my square knot tied in. One of my ends is clamped off. When I pull this straight, I end up with that same cow hitch. Let's tie off to this bar here using that hitch. We'll go over the top, around the front of the rope, behind the bar, and through. Pull it tight. Now this may not be so stable all by itself, but if we were to tie this in and add a half hitch, it works well. Another way to form a cow hitch is to take a bite of our rope, put our fingers through, pinch around, and together. Now let's say I wanted to tie off to this tree. I'll form my cow hitch by pinching around, and now I'll just run this end right through. Let's pull this tight. Watch what happens when I pull tension on it. This end starts to slip away, and if I pull too much, it's gonna spill. Okay, let's try that again. I'll run my end through, pull it tight. This time, I'm going to add a half hitch on top. Now this might work, but we can already see that this isn't cinching down enough because of the type of rope we have. So let's see what else we could do. What if instead of doing a half hitch, I just ran my rope around the back and right back through that cow hitch? So let's do that. Run it back through. Okay, take a look at this. You might recognize this as a reinforced bowline. This is extremely stable. In fact, the bowline is so stable, we don't need this extra turn back here. So let's tie this again without it. I'll pull in my cow hitch on the left. Now remember, I only need half of it, so I'll let this one go. I'll run my end through. I'll go around and then back through that half cow hitch. Pull this tight. All right. See, even the rooster agrees. It's a good knot. All right, let's use paracord and the knot we just learned to tie off the corner of this tarp. We'll run our cord through the grommet. Now I'll pinch in my cow hitch. I'll run my cord through the cow hitch, around the standing portion, and then back through again. We'll pull this tight. That won't go anywhere. Now what if you tie your shoes the incorrect way, using a granny knot? You go left over right, left over right. This looks similar to a square knot, but it's nowhere near as secure. If we pull one end straight on our granny knot, watch what we get. This is a clove hitch. Here it is tied on the bar, left over right, and wrap it around, left over right, wrap it around, pull it tight. And there is our clove hitch. We'll tie a clove hitch by going around our bar. We'll cross over the top, and then we'll tuck underneath that first turn we did. This knot works best when we have tension applied equally in both directions. Tension in only one direction can cause it to slip free. This is a knot you can use for multiple anchor points. Arborists use it to tie off to multiple branches. Now, if you're using this to tie off to something, you always want to add a couple half hitches to make sure it stays secure. Earlier, we tied off to a tarp. Now we are going to tie together some wood. And we're going to do that with a running clove hitch. So I'll take my rope here. I'll go over the top, go around. And as I come up, I'll just go back underneath that first turn that I did. There we go. Now when I finish tying this off, I'm going to use this end here. 
so I need to give myself a little more room. There we go. Now let's just dress this up and pull it tight. Our clove hitch is running up and down, and we'll pull our rope through to tighten everything up. Now I'll just add a couple half hitches to finish it off. So we've tied off the corner of a tarp, we've tied together some wood, and now it's time to use both knots we've learned to tie down this trip to the dump. And we're gonna start by tying off to this anchor point right down there. I've already hooked into my anchor point. I'll take the left side and pinch in my cow hitch. Here we go. Take this end, I'll thread it through, go around the standing portion, and then thread it right back where I came from. Pull everything tight. There we go. We're hooked into our last anchor point here. Now I'm gonna pull in a clove hitch by twisting in a loop. I'll twist in another loop. There we go, and I'll lay them right on top of each other. I'm gonna pull in a bite, and then I'll thread this bite through my clove hitch. There we go, let's pull all that tight. Good. So now what I've done is given myself a loop where I can pull in some mechanical advantage. I'll take the end of my rope, thread it through, and I'll pull everything tight. Now I'll just use a couple half hitches to tie it off. Here it is one more time. Twist in one loop, twist in another loop right on top. Grab a bite and I'll thread it through my clove hitch there. Tighten everything up. There we go. And now I have this bite here that I can run my cord through. Here's a little tip. I'll run it through once, go through one more time. And if I do it this way, it'll lock on itself and I don't have to hold it while I tie in my final half hitches. There we go. As you're learning the ropes, one great book is the Ashley Book of Knots by Clifford Ashley. This book has thousands of knots in it. Now it was written in 1947, so it wasn't out when Nylon Cord came out, but it still has plenty of knots for you to learn and explore. Another book I've enjoyed is the Morrow Guide to Knots. This one was written in 1982. It has colored photos and there's plenty of knots in here for you to learn as well. Let's take a second to talk about rope. There's two common styles you'll run across. One is twisted, where the rope is twisted together. The other is braided, and you can see that it is. I always prefer braided rope because it's easier for me to use. Let me give you an example. If I pull in a knot and it's real tight and I'm not able to just push it through, what I can do is twist the braid to stiffen up the core and now I can push it through. As you're practicing, that comes in handy. Now, if I were to do that with a twisted rope, it's not as friendly because when I go to twist, it just undoes the rope. Now I could try doing it the other way, but I like having the option of being able to twist either way. Now these two ropes look very similar, but they behave differently. This green rope is much stiffer compared to this blue rope. Now that makes a difference because as you're pulling in knots, if the rope is trying to spring back on you, it makes it more difficult to practice. Take a look at this maroon rope, it's very soft. You see it has very little spring to it. I can tie in a knot here, it'll hold very well, but it can be difficult to untie the softer your rope is. Now, as far as personal preference goes, this is my favorite. It's quarter inch Paramax. It ties very well and it unties very well. It's made out of nylon and it has a thousand pound breaking strength. Rope that I would stay away from is this cheap stuff. You'd find it at Lowe's or Home Depot. You can buy it between 10 and $20. But this stuff just gets really ratty and it only lasts and looks good for a little while. It doesn't work well for tying in knots. It is very soft, so it doesn't have much of a stable core as you're trying to tie and untie. So if you just want something for temporary, this is something you can do. Otherwise, I would buy a rope that is a little more stable, costs a little more money, you get what you pay for. Most of the rope I buy, I pick up at REI. They're not sponsoring this video, 
They've just done me well when it comes to buying rope.